in a not-for-profit, I think the one big leadership difference is that instead of paying a lot of money to your staff, instead of paying your board members, you're actually asking your board members to give you lots of money. And you tend to pay rather small amounts. So the need for a leader in the not-for-profit world is very much embraceive. You have to really hug lots of people, physically and metaphorically. <laughs> Many have done it very successfully, but a lot of them stumble, not because they're not smart or strategic, but because they're used to everyone obeying them. You know, they're used to everyone doing what they say rather than having to reach out and hug and pull in and cajole and to, and to convince people that they really want to participate somehow. That, I think, is a very big difference in leadership. The successful arts marketers are the ones who are able to really create truly wonderful, exciting projects and events that draw, again, that draw people to the organization. The key thing in fundraising is listening. It's like any sales, is to listen to what the donor's interests are and then figure out how to make your pitch, not change what you're gonna do, not to violate your art you wanna create, but how do you discuss your art that's going to appeal to this potential donor and also what are you gonna give that particular donor back? Some donors want their name up in lights. Some donors are looking for a social life. Some donors just love meeting famous people. Different donors are looking for different things. If you can't determine that, then you can't make the best pitch. And then you get a $100 gift instead of a $100,000 gift. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think those C's I'm going to steal now. Um, thank you. Um, but yes, I absolutely agree. And, and, and I think that could be the mantra for all not-for-profit management, uh, never command. Anyone who walks into a not-for-profit the first day and says, do this, do that, or my way's better, doesn't get it.